Hi and welcome to High on Coding. I'm your host, Mohamed Azam, and in this video, I will show you how you can set up Team City to build your application or to serve, which will serve as the build server. Okay. So the first thing is you have to go to the Team City JetBrains website, select the products like Team City. Now you can download the professional version, which is free, which that that's the one that I I have running. And it will give you three build agents, which we are going to see what build agents are, uh, 20 user accounts, so that's pretty cool, and 20 build configuration. If you want something more, then you have to purchase uh, additional build agents or a, a different account, like a enterprise account, okay? So download this, install this, which you will, which, will, which is pretty easy. So once you've got this installed, it's going to ask you that which uh, port you want to execute this build server. So I entered 81. So if I go to port 81, and since my machine is my server, so I, I can access it using localhost. Okay, so you, I mean, I'm already logged in, but when you will try to access this port or any other port that you put over in the configuration during the installation, uh, you can just go to that port and it will pull up a credential screen where you enter your username and password okay so this is my the main setup page and the application that i'm working on is the same as e-study application if you haven't checked out the e-study screencast then i highly recommend that you do so also if you haven't checked out the github screencast then i highly recommend that you do so because you are going to need a little bit of background of how to push uh, data into github and here's the screencast that i'm talking about oops setting up repository on GitHub and uh, pushing first project. And also check out these eStudy screencasts. These are very useful. eStudy 1, eStudy 2, 3. So this can be considered 4. Also Rake, you, you should check out Rake also because I'm going to use all these things in this one. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you have to create a project, okay? In my case, I already have a project called eStudy, which is right over here. So I'll select eStudy. And let's check out the build configuration because that's the important part. So I'm just gonna to go to edit settings. The first thing you can say is the default build or the name. So I'm just saying default build and this build will run whenever someone checks in the code. You can change the build format, uh, the numbering format, the build counter, which means that how many build you have currently ran. So I have ran like 19 builds. And there are different options that what will be the result or how you will want to fail the build. So it's like uh, at least one test fail and out of memory and all that stuff, okay? So this is the easy page that you will just write the information. Let's move to the version control settings. I just clicked on menu on the right hand side and it will give you options for different version controls. As you can see, most of the version controls are listed over here. So I'm a Git fan, so I selected Git by JetBrains. Uh, if you are using Team City 4, then you might have to download an additional plugin to, you know, to work with Git. So I'm using Team City 5, and I think this link is also for Team City 5, as you can see. So this has a built-in for, uh, you know, for Git. So you can also type the the root name uh, or the name of your source control. I'm just saying, okay, e study Git version control the clone URL where your project is hosted on GitHub, the branch name, usually it's master branch that you want to pull, right? Clone repository, I'm not doing anything. I don't think this uh, username style makes any difference. Uh, the other thing, and this is very important, is the authentication method. And there are different things, anonymous default private key, password or private key. So I selected private key because um, when you are creating an account on GitHub, it will give you two keys. One is a public key and one is a private key. So you will act, actually, you have to generate those keys, right? And once you generate those keys, if you, if you can, if you check out this screencast over here, the setting up the repository on GitHub, it will show you how you can create those particular keys. And I'm giving this, this is the path to the private key, okay? So you have to give the path to the private key. How will you know that that's a private key? Well, you're going to open this file, id underscore rsa in this particular path or whatever path in your machine is. 
and it will say that it's a private key it's not a public key okay also the public key uh, in the description is like pub which is like public key checking interval is basically how many times or what is the time interval that it will check the repository it's okay 60 seconds is pretty good okay so let's move to the build configuration rake so rake is actually used to build to run the build script okay oh, that's, that's actually that is a build script which is used to run the unit test it, it's going to build the application it's going to like uh, documentation and all this stuff so i have a rake over here which is build run a rake and i have uh, other things over here so i'm just going to select rake then you have to give the path to the rake file and the path to the rake file since my build server is my local machine so the path is basically on my local machine which is a rake file or whatever uh, i'm not running anything else like these kind of r spec and should i and other frameworks and cucumber so i didn't really do anything over there let's move to the build triggering now this is important because um, build trigger is basically uh, that when or will the build be triggered so that the server your build server is actually going to pull out the information from the source control okay and start the build so the quiet period is very important because you can have a default value which is 60 seconds so which this means is that if you check in one file and if you have 10 files to check in and you are just checking in individually like one file at a time so it's not going to start the build as soon as you check in okay so the quiet period means that you have 60 seconds to check in all the files which is like one minute to check in all the files that you have and after one minute it's going to start the build because it happens that a user is checking in file or oh, we have like five other files and he checks in and then 10 other files and he checks in so it's going to wait for one minute unless all the file until all the files are actually checked in and start the build now you can customize it to 10 seconds or something else but 60 seconds is pretty cool okay so let's actually do that okay let me go over there and i'm just going to write a test public void test fail i'm going to say fail because i'm going to fail this test assert dot r equal one is equal to two which is which is of course false right so this is my uh, code and i'm going to go to this is a git add i'm going to push this code on the production or on the QA or whatever you would like to call it uh, fail test okay get um, push and I'm going to push it to the master branch because when I will push to the master branch it's going to uh, invoke the I mean that's the branch that is being handled by the team city so team city is looking at the master branch and whenever anything is pushed on the master branch then it's going to pull it out now i also have this notification thing running it's called uh, i think like windows tray windows notifier on the windows tray notifier which is pretty cool because i can just it's a service that's running and it's going to tell me uh, when the build actually starts and when the build actually uh, it failed or su uh, succeeded so let's go over here and check out some other things there are dependencies here, here we go so the build has started it, it's like a small pop-up thing and it's going to say tell you that build has start and then it's going to tell you the build has failed that's because you know the test that we just created it's a, a bogus test and it's going to fail right so let me go over here and i am going to just remove the test and build it again and let's see if i can do add and i'm going to do a uh, let's type something failed test removed and push it out again so as soon as i push out it's going to wait i think for like 10 seconds the build will start it's going to pull the information from the github from the the clone url that i specified from the master branch and then it's going to run and uh, well this time it should pass the other thing that you need to set up is the agent so a agent is basically who is responsible for running the build so you will just i mean uh, you know uh, set up one agent just like i have set up one agent over here 